they used to be best friends, but then they got all stupid. Can you promise me you won't get stupid? <laughs> Not stupider than you, dum-dum. <laughs> Good night, stupid. Welcome to Miss Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 cartoon TV characters with the saddest backstories. Every time I move, eventually you find me and start hanging around. Just another lame excuse to see me, man. It's getting me down. You know, I'm actually glad to see you. For this list, we'll be looking at our favorite animated characters with tear jerking pasts. Before we get started, let us know which character's backstory made you emotional. Or, you know, just sweat from your eyes, if you don't roll that way. Number 10, Sheldon J. Plankton, SpongeBob SquarePants. Although Plankton is presented as the antagonist of the show, the real story is a lot more nuanced. Why does he hate us so? Oh, you might as well blame me, SpongeBob. There was a time when Plankton and I were best friends. <gasps> it turns out there was a time when Plankton and Krabs were best friends and business partners. Their idea to open up a burger joint was a shared dream. But when old man Jenkins got poisoned by their burger, things went awry. Well, it was your fault the patty was tainted. You're the one who put too much seaweed sauce in the burger. You let it sit out too long. That's what did it. I'm taking the recipe and fixing it. The duo split, each with half a recipe. Whereas Krabs managed to create a success for himself, Plankton wasn't so lucky, which explains his unwavering motivation for stealing the Krabby Patty secret formula. <laughs> In the end, they both lost their best friend over greed and glory, but it was Plankton who drew the shorter end of the stick. Oh, barnacles. My life has been nothing but a long line of disappointment since we became enemies. All these years I've been trying to steal your formula, but I was really just trying to steal back our friendship. Number nine, Courage the Cowardly Dog. Courage the Cowardly Dog. We're not sure if it's seeing Courage animated as a puppy or what, but this episode is on a whole other level of sad. Baby, you're supposed to catch the ball. <laughs> Towards the series finale, we get to find out just how Courage ended up living with Muriel and Eustace. When he was just a pup, Courage witnessed a crazed veterinarian nab his parents and send them to space as subjects of his dog breeding experiment. You'll be the first humans to see my secret experiment at work. Breeding dogs in space is the future. There was a little bit of tussling, but Courage unfortunately didn't manage to save them in time. He watched from a dark alley, alone and scared, as the rocket with his parents launched. Luckily, Muriel would come along and take him home to a new life, but we bet Courage always wondered what happened to his biological parents. Oh, oh my poor thing. Out here all alone? What courage you have. Would you like to come home with me? <laughs> Number 8. Master Splinter Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles franchise any way you slice this one, yes, that was a ninja pun, thank you for noticing, Master Splinter's past is pretty devastating. He has two main different backstories, depending on the iteration. The first is that he was once the pet rat of the honorable ninja Hamato Yoshi. One of the greatest practitioners of ninjutsu in many centuries. I was his pet rat, and I learned ninjutsu by mimicking his moves. For many years, I was happy. We were a family. Sadly, Yoshi would eventually be slain by Shredder. Splinter would end up in the sewers with our favorite turtle brothers and the radioactive mutagen leak would transform the five of them. The next morning, I awoke to find the four had doubled in size. The ooze had affected their growth. It changed me also. The second account of things is arguably a little darker. In this version, Splinter was Hamato Yoshi, and the opposite of the way the turtles were mutated into humanoids, Yoshi was mutated into a rat. But Yoshi had most recently been with the rats. Then Hamato Yoshi is you! All things considered, Splinter ended up an adoptive dad of four, so many things could have turned out worse. 
Number seven, Meteora Butterfly slash Miss Heinous, Star versus the Forces of Evil. When we were first introduced to Miss Heinous, she was the headmistress of St. Olga's Reform School for Wayward Princesses, where she was brainwashing students to keep them in line and using them to restore her youth. Utterly incompetent! But no matter. This is between me and Princess Marco now. Hurt people hurt people. That's definitely the message here. In season three, we'd find out that Miss Heinous had a whole past that made her more than just a one-off villain. <gasps> and this, this was my baby bed. As it turned out, she was Eclipse's and Globgore's daughter, which meant she was half human and half monster. But more than that, it meant that she was part of the Butterfly family. King Shastakan, the Lady Saint Olga is here to see you. Oh, Saint Olga, thank you for coming. This, this is it. This baby is unfit to inherit the kingdom. She is absolutely heinous. Both she and her parents were really put through the ringer, from Eclipsa being trapped in ice over her love for a monster, to Meteora's rightful place at the throne being stolen from her. Are you my... my mama? You know, I think I prefer mother. Number six, Timmy Turner, the fairly odd parents. As long as Timmy is still 10 years old, we're considering this his backstory. Outside of getting his every wish granted, Timmy's life was kind of, well, sad. His parents were neglectful, selfish, and dare we say on the lower end of the intelligence spectrum, and he was constantly abused by his babysitter. All right, squirt. Three things. One, stay out of my way. Two, go to bed early. Three, do the dishes. His life at school wasn't much better either. He was severely mistreated by Mr. Crocker and the kids at school. Plus, his wishes don't usually work out for the better in the end, so let's just pile that onto the list. What do you think, Timmy? I think I'm calling the cops. Still, we're glad that he has Cosmo and Wanda to show him the ropes. Without them, we're not sure how he would have made it through. That's creepy and inaccurate. We know that Timmy was taken to school by his loving babysitter, Vicky. Number five, Chucky Finster, Rugrats franchise. In the first few seasons of Rugrats, Chucky's mother is noticeably not around. Well, you can still come with us. Um, you guys go ahead. Mother's Day is for kids who got bobs. I'll just stay here. It wouldn't be until season four in the episode Mother's Day that we'd finally find out what happened. Chucky's mum was present for at least a little bit of his infancy before she ended up in the hospital. The consensus is that she had some sort of terminal illness because she started keeping a journal while she was sick where the last thing she wrote was a poem for Chucky. My sweet little Chucky. So I must leave you behind me. This poem will tell you where you always can find me. When a gentle wind blows, that's my hand on your face. And when the tree gives you shade, that's my sheltering embrace. This is definitely one of the sadder episodes, and we can imagine it struck a chord with a lot of kids who'd lost parents of their own. Your Bob blood is both so much, Chucky. Number four, Scrooge McDuck and the whole duck family. DuckTales. For a cartoon about anthropomorphic ducks, there's a lot of trauma in this family. It really all started when Della went missing. Until that very last boat. I couldn't keep her safe. The rocket and your mother were lost to the inky abyss of space. Not only did the triplet's dad seem to be out of the picture, we've heard something about a firecracker under his chair, but their mum wasn't around either. Donald, meanwhile, lost his twin sister and now had three kids to raise. To make matters worse, Donald blamed his uncle Scrooge for her disappearance, and Scrooge, well, he blamed himself. He spent his fortunes trying to find his niece, but of course, he'd come up empty every time. You could have called her down. There were too many variables. So you're the reason our mom is gone. Cheap old Scrooge probably bailed as soon as it put a dent in his money bin. Well, you've successfully pushed your family and everyone who cared about you away. Donald and Scrooge wouldn't speak to each other for 10 whole years, and Huey, Dewey and Louie wouldn't find out any of it until the show's events. Ah, oh, fooey indeed. I've been able to survive in the thin lunar atmosphere thanks to Gyro's Oxy Chew. It provides oxygen, water, and nutrition. Number three, Stan Pines. 
Gravity Falls. Listen, we know Ford was trapped in other dimensions for 30 years, and got made fun of for his six fingers and everything else, but Stan's been put through it too. I lived with my mom and pa in the lead paint district of the family pod shop. Dad was a strict man. Tough as a cinder block and not easily impressed. I'm not impressed. Not only was he responsible for the falling out with his brother, he was also disowned and kicked out. You ignoramus. Your brother was going to be our ticket out of this dump. All you ever do is lie and cheat and ride on your brother's coattails. Well, this time you cost our family potential millions. And until you make us a fortune, you're not welcome in this household. What? His desperate attempts to make a living would land him in jail in three different states and get him banned in 32 of them. It would take 10 years, but Ford would eventually ask to see him again, only to insist that he get as far away as possible. We can't imagine the amount of guilt he must have felt after causing his own brother's disappearance. He'd carry this with him for the next 30 years, living under his brother's name and trying to bring him back. I didn't get much sleep that night. Or the night after that. I tried for weeks to turn that dumb machine back on. But without the other two journals, it was hopeless. Number two, Dr. Heinz Doofenshmirtz, Phineas and Ferb. Where do we even start with Doofenshmirtz's phone book length list of tragic backstories? Unfortunately, my birthday has always been the lousiest day of the year. It all began on the day of my actual birth. His parents didn't show up to his own birth. He had to throw himself his own birthday party, which no one attended. He was forced to wear dresses growing up and was then made fun of for it. He had to take up the position of the family lawn gnome. He lost his best friend, who was a balloon, by the way. His brother was always favored over him. Should we go on? No wonder this man became a villain. Talk about an origin story. Well, basically, my parents disowned me. I was being raised by Ocelot. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Uncle Iroh, Avatar The Last Airbender. We can't imagine the pain of losing a child. Happy birthday, my son. If only I could have helped you. Leaves from the vine. Falling so slow, like fragile, tiny shells. Harley Quinn. Harley Quinn. Giving up your career for an abusive partner? Yeah. No. You treated me bad. What? You lied to me. Oh. You never loved me. Come on. I know that now. Well, well, that's nonsense, Puddin. My motives are never clear. Wilt. Foster's home for imaginary friends. On top of losing his arm, Wilt lost Jordan too. I looked everywhere for you, but you disappeared. If I hadn't been so obsessed about that game, you never would have gotten hurt and I never would have lost you. Losing you taught me something. Winning isn't everything. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Simon Petrikov slash Ice King – Adventure Time Although Adventure Time has quite a lot of heavier story arcs, Marceline and Simon's has to be the saddest. Now, I never believed in the supernatural stuff myself, just had a fascination with superstitions. But everything changed when I came into contact with this item. Simon Petrikov was once a kind-hearted antiquarian with a beloved fiancé named Betty. Unfortunately, he'd come into possession of a magical crown that would eventually lead him to losing his sanity. After Betty left and in the middle of the Mushroom War, he'd find a young Marceline, who he'd take under his wing. Ew! It's a dead brat! Hey, yeah, so it is! Looks like we've got a cute new traveling buddy. However, Simon would inevitably completely forget about himself and abandon Marceline for her own safety. Marceline, who already believed she'd been abandoned by her mum, had to experience this yet a second time and Simon, well, he became the Ice King. Marceline, is it just you and me in the wreckage of the world? That must be so confusing for a little girl. His backstory feels like an allusion to Alzheimer's, which is just a little too real and way too heartbreaking. Simon, promise me you won't put it on again. 
Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.